It's a powerful speech. I asked him for permission to use it. And I dare say that speech, the discussions we had afterwards, left imprints. We're blessed because Tim cared to share. See, that's the imprint. That's what happens when people are concerned and they care about you. KHSU Sports. Tim and the others were involved in the sports teams. We were broadcasting lumberjack football, lumberjack baseball, lumberjack track, lumber, you name it, we were doing it. And that's where so many of these people got their start, at the campus radio station. Today, the campus TV station, the campus newspaper. Uh, Cardinal Courier people, thank you for that front page. Thank you. That's where it starts. This is where you learn the things you have to do for your lifetime of joy. There are a number of men here from Sigma Phi Epsilon at, at Buff State. They were my students. They were, my, they were folks who were in the office frequently talking about the things you do to plan events on campus. We have groups like that right here. They may not have Greek letters, but they're doing the same thing. We are here tonight because a group of students cared enough to ask me to think and share. And you are here because a lot of support people behind the scenes got things going. These guys mean so much to me because we had so much fun during the five years I was at Buff State. Many of them are here tonight. An old high school friend is here, Mark and, his, and Kathy, right? Yeah. It's like you look back and way back when we made all these imprints and here we are decades later. There he is, look at mustache, long hair, love those glasses, you know? And whoops, and we get into a situation where I won't fall, I promise. We have a situation where we have a lifetime of joys. Carrie Mitchell is here tonight. Carrie is. Uh, at the Canadian consulate office and did a lot of wonderful things that convinced the Canadian embassy to fund me three times on various trips, research grants, to do some great things in Canada. It turned into a series of trips where we took students to Canada and to the US, and I've got a couple of those. I was involved in that from 97 to 2009, and every year the COM 367 class would go excuse me, go to Canada or, or someplace here in the States. It's become very expensive and it's more difficult to do than it was in the past. But Carrie, where are you? I owe you so much, thank you. The grants, the help, pushing the folks over in Washington to give me some money, that kind of thing, thank you. you know? uh, students are better because you helped me and I really appreciate that. A lifetime of joy. When you talk about what that means, we're talking about imprints. And I hope you understand tonight, while I tell you my story, it's your story. That you fill in the blank, you put your piece in, and you ought to be able to see the same types of things happening in your life. People who care. People who care about you. People you care about. A lifetime of imprints. How can we not? <laughs> Many of you know I've this, I was asked to be the spirit chair at the... Uh, for the St. John Fisher contingent for the St. Patty's Day Parade in Rochester. And you will remember that I was running around with my little camcorder and grabbing pictures, and I, I ran out in front of all these folks and grabbed the, grabbed the video, did the screenshot, got it in the software, none of which we had at Buff State. You put this all together, and there they are. You know, I mean, you want to know the joy of college. It isn't just what happens in the classroom. It's what happens when you get involved with your students, you have an opportunity to share, and, and, and you do things, oh, goofy maybe. I wore the same green shirt they all had. I had a lot of fun. And you know what? That's what it is. That's where the imprints happen. I will tell you, I will never forget this. I will tell you, that's just a key part of that. <sighs> Talking about technology, in 1972, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> John McKay and I were talking about, well, you know, we ought to give the kids an opportunity to see what they do. Now, VHS hadn't been invented yet, so we're dealing with open reel tape. Big things. The, the VCR, they called it VTR back then, video tape recorder. 
The VTR, because there were no cassettes, the VTR was about the size of six of these chairs. They would be wheeled in, and they're big two and a half inch tapes, and we'd sit there in a little black, or actually a big black and white camera, obtrusive as could be. You think five, four, three, two, one is obtrusive. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've, got this, you've got this huge camera, and then they'd have to go to the library to view them. Now think of the logistics. We're putting 1,600 students through this course every quarter. And they're all getting videotaped on these great big videos. And they're all going to the library. The librarians loved us. <laughs> we got to see this for Mr. Seward. You know? Well, things have changed. And that's part of the imprints. Look how, you know, what do we do now? My class knows. We shoot the videos in class on a little itty bitty high definition camera that fits in your palm. It sits up on a tripod unless I drop it and then it's a nice catch, right, Wade? Right? Okay, caught it. As it's falling, I go, ah. And the guys go, wow. I said, once a jock, always a jock. You know, <laughs> caught the camera. But now we put it up on Blackboard. And the cool thing is, they do the speeches around 8 o'clock. There, yes, they're 8 o'clock classes. They do the speeches. We're done by 9.30. And you know, we got another class afterwards. By 2 in the afternoon, aren't they up there? Yeah. yeah. They're up there. None of this going to the library. They download it. Now, do you watch it? I don't know. I'm hoping you do, you know. But, you know, it's that, oh, i got to watch my speech now. What happened? You know, this course, obviously, COM250 means a lot to me. And I'll tell you why. This is the last time I get to teach it. And I've been very blessed and very fortunate. That's my class. All 17 of them, which is the other issue. I mean, they're always there at 8 in the morning. I'm thinking to myself, what's in the water? I mean, they're there. And uh, you know, that's a blessing for a teacher to know that your students care. So you know, there's a few things that I know. For sure, I'll put 50 bucks down on this stuff. I know for sure, if you find something you truly love doing, great things will happen. Once again, I wish I were smart enough to say that. But that quote came from Kirk Baxter. Kirk Baxter accepted the 2011 Oscar. He won it for film editing on the social network. And when he won the award, he said that to his little daughter. We're back to where we started, imprints. Believe. Find something you love, great things will happen. I had no clue when John McKay told me I should do this, that all those years later, I'd be blessed and fortunate to be here tonight with you. Great things will happen. But, you know, you got to get things right. Sometimes they've got to be right the first time. You have to be thinking about how you do what you do. Life doesn't give us do-overs. So many of you are going out now. You've got cover letters. You've got resumes. You've got to get the apostrophe right. You've got to know the kinds of things. And my students, I mean, they know I go, I, I go after them with, uh, with mechanics. And, you know, it's, I'll tell you the truth, it's a pain in the butt to read those too when you got to do that kind of stuff and circle this and do that, but you do it for a reason. So that you don't make the mistake when you're out there. You don't make the mistake on your cover letter. You don't make the mistake on the letter that you write for your internship. In other words, there are places, and you can name not some more, where you got to do it right the very first time, and do-overs are not accepted. There aren't do-overs in the big stuff. Third thing, be generous with your time and your talent. About a month ago, Jim Mehmet, who a long time ago was a reporter at the DNC, and I had the opportunity to have Jim teach some journalism classes for us, Jim has, excuse me, since retired, did a story about Fisher alums last month. Here is a group of students who graduated in 1984. Their 25th college reunion, 2009, they're a core group of them. We're talking about an issue that one of them passionately believed in. Kevin Cardius was, is uh, involved in church work out in the Finger Lakes. He 
He is um, working with a number of Catholic churches in the region. And he had gone to a missionary trip in Jamaica, and he saw the abject poverty and the horribleness, and he wanted to do something. At the Pittsford pub, okay, who knows where God works, at the Pittsford pub, he gathered a few of his friends together, 84 stands for 84, class of 84, and they formed a nonprofit group called 84 Third World Hope. Those alums, 25 years later, were Kevin Cargis, Jim Carney, Yvonne Chinatri, Cheshire, Rod Christian, Tom D'Amico, Michelle LeDuc, Senglob, and Matt Shu. Some of them are here tonight. Rod, I know you're here. Where are you? Rod Christian, I saw you. There we go. And, and Matt here? I didn't see him. Okay. Three of those were my advisees. My first set of advisees at Fisher did this. They went on to make a commitment. Kevin in the article said, the 8-4 stands for something, the, you know, our class. 8 also stands for the seven of us plus Jesus, because he says, God guides us. They, may, they have made imprints. They have built a school. They are building a treatment plant. They are now involved in doing other works in the community down in Jamaica. And it all happened because of the values, goodness, discipline, and knowledge that the Brazilian fathers implanted on us so many years ago. Sally Vaughn is back there. We have this enormous program that many of you are involved in, in terms of reaching out to the community, the service scholars. It's in that spirit that all of this has happened. Three of those folks are my students from a long time ago. And you know, they worked so hard and they've succeeded in so many ways in leaving imprints in changing lives. And I can tell you in talking with them, because we've all reconnected thanks to LinkedIn, you know, we all connected that way, they changed me, they changed the people they touch, and they are touched by the people they work with. That's what they do. That's from the website. And they have worked hard and long to make a difference. So yes, be generous with your time and your talent and your treasures. You know, many of you are the class of 2011. 2011. Some of you 2012, 2013, 2014. But let's focus on 21, 2011 now because of just the logistics. Where will you be 25 years from now? I'll be with you. Hmm? Where will you be? 20, what will 2036 bring you? I don't know. But you know, maybe there will be something like this. 11, the class year. 8, for the number of people. And something that hits you. Something that motivates you. Their legacy, their imprint, might very well be 25 years from now, a bunch of you are sitting at the equivalent of the Pittsford pub, because God knows what that will be, right? But you'll be legal, so you can do it. Uh, at the pub, something else will click. Maybe you'll remember this, maybe you'll hit something else, but you know, you will make an imprint. The future imprints are your stories that have yet to be told. Your stories that have yet to be told. So follow your dreams, make your imprints. Other people will make the imprints on you.